Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. This technique gives you almost complete control over the ambient light conditions prevalent at the time of shooting and can be used on a variety of subjects. Okay so just how did I do it? Well this was the subject, uh, these thistles, uh, and what I'm trying to do here is, uh, in effect, overpower the daylight uh, and add my own light source, which gives me uh, a lot more control over the way the image looks. OK, so what I'm going to do to start with is just set up a tripod about here somewhere. There we are. So with that set, what I can do now is I'll go and get a camera uh, I like to work off a tripod for these sort of things because um, the flowers themselves, the thistles in this case, uh, are actually just blowing around in the wind, which gives you one part of a, a moving image. Uh, so if you've got your camera on a tripod, I find it makes it a bit easier uh, just to frame the subject properly. Now on my camera this time, I have a 70 to 200 uh, telephoto zoom. Uh, now I'm using this to allow me to get a bit closer to the subject without actually having to invade the space. Uh, in a lot of wildlife conditions you'll find a, a relatively long zoom lens quite uh, good for this sort of uh, subject. So I'm just going to pop this on the tripod, like that, and I'll just frame up the image. Right, so I'll just bring that up a little that and we'll try and focus on the subject a bit somewhere around there I think and I might just zoom that in I'm at the 70 millimeter end at the moment so I'm just going to move that in maybe a bit more that's uh, about 150 something like that just reform that image Right for the focus point, about there. I might even zoom that in a bit further. There we are. That's right at the 200 mil end. Uh, now, if I just frame that ever so slightly over there. Oh, look, we've got a B. Very good. Right, I think that will do. OK, so with that uh, now framed up, uh, what I can do is just use the meter in the camera uh, just to get me a general exposure of the uh, of the scene. Uh, and so having done that, I'm looking at about uh, f9 at one hundredth of a second at 100 ISO. So with those settings, I'll just grab an image and we'll see what it looks like. OK, and you can see in that it's not bad as images go, but it's nothing special. So in order to make it something a bit more special, uh, I'm going to add uh, some uh, flash. So what I'm going to do is place a flash around here somewhere so that I'm almost backlighting the subject. Okay, so here we are. I'm using this Profoto uh, B1X uh, and this is a studio head which has modeling light built into it and uh, everything else but importantly it also has high speed sync uh, and that is what I'll be using uh, to cut out the daylight I'll go back to that uh, in a bit so this is a 500 joule uh, unit but you can actually do this uh, just with a normal speed light you don't need any of the uh, uh, large amount of energy that this has really okay so I'll just turn this on like that and then we'll place it in position. Just pointing at the thistle, like that. OK, now the other thing I'm going to need, of course, is a flash sync trigger. Here we are, this is a flash sync trigger that I'm using. I'm just going to pop that on the top of the camera. Now with this uh, turned on, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, just change the sync from first curtain to high speed, like that. 
Now in high speed sync, that will allow me to use any shutter speed I want. So again, just looking through the viewfinder to use the meter in the camera, what I'm going to do is just find a shutter speed which will uh, eliminate the daylight. So just winding up the shutter speed, there we go. And I'm going to use a shutter speed of 1,600th of a second. Okay, so with that set, uh, first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that that is actually taking out uh, all the, the daylight. So I'm just going to temporarily turn the flash off from here and we'll just grab an image. There, and you can see on that that there is uh, no image thing to speak of anyway. Okay, so with that done, I'll turn the flash head back on again, like so. Really, now it's just a case of um, matching the uh, distance, the flashes from the subject, uh, and the amount of energy in that flash, and the uh, aperture that I'm using. Uh, so the energy in the flash is fixed. I've just got it set on half energy at the moment. What I will do uh, is just grab an image and just see what it looks like. Yeah, and you can see that in that image, um, we've got rid of all of the background uh, and just left the illumination from the flash. Okay, so with that done, uh, the next thing to do, the next sensible thing to do, is to, just to bracket that exposure a little either side. So what I'm going to do is just turn the energy up on the uh, flash head there uh, by one stop and then down by one stop and take a series uh, like that. So I'll just take one stop of energy out of the flash, like that, and we'll grab another image. And now I'll add uh, two stops, which will give me a bracketing of one stop either side. Okay, so far so good. So with that uh, little exercise done, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is just add uh, a little more interest. Uh, and I'm just going to spray the, uh, the plant there, the thistle, um, with some water. So here we go. So having done that, uh, we're all set just to uh, take a series of images uh, just to uh, give us a choice when we come to do any post-production. So just looking through the viewfinder, I'll just grab a few images. Okay, so with those now uh, captured, uh, that's it for actually taking the picture. And this technique obviously can be used for any subject. It doesn't have to be uh, some thistles, it could be uh, flowers in a field, it could be portraiture. Uh, the same technique will work with anything. Okay, so with that now all captured, uh, I'm going to go into Photoshop and just do the post-production. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up uh, some of the variants that I captured outside. Uh, so you can see in this one, this is um, the normal uh, exposure, if you like, before we put any water on the, uh, on the thistle. Uh, and if you remember, I took a, uh, a variant which was uh, brighter and a variant which was darker. But out of all of them, I actually like the one with the water droplets on. So that's the one I'm going to pick, which is this one here. Uh, I think this has worked uh, extremely well, actually. Uh, you can see all the detail in this. If I just uh, zoom in a little, uh, it is uh, quite amazing, really, the amount of detail that I've uh, got in that, which is pretty good. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a duplicate of this. So just going onto the layer here, I'll just right click the mouse 
ask for a duplicate layer, but I'm wanting a new file. So I'm just going to go down to new and we're just going to call that thistle like that. Just click on OK. What that has done is made a new file and popped it at the top up here. OK, right. So the next thing I want to do uh, is just look at all the, uh, the various parts of the image. Uh, so obviously this is the main part of the image and I quite like this out of focus bit but I'm not too keen on all these little bits sticking out uh, from the sides. Um, so what I'm actually going to do to start with I think is apply a crop so I know how much of these to take out. So I'm going to go up here to uh, the crop tool, click on that. Uh, I'm going to pick my usual ratio of 16 by 9 and I'm just going to pull the sides in a little bit to start with and I might just turn this round just to straighten it up a bit like that crop that in like so and move that over a bit something like that anyway Right, so that's the bit I want, and I'm just going to click on OK. Right, so that's all right, but I've got various bits on the edge of the frame here which are a bit distracting, so I'm just going to take those out. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is just add a layer to that, like so. And in this layer, I'm going to just paint over the bits of uh, the image that I don't want. But I'm going to use the background. The background, although it looks black, isn't. Um, so I'm just going to sample with the eyedropper tool uh, the background near the point that I want. So I need to go onto the layer where the full image is, just sample that, then go onto the new layer, and with a brush, possibly a bit smaller than that. There we are. I'll just get rid of those bits. Now you could clone these out, uh, but this gives you a bit more control, I find. So again, just going back to the original, just going to sample the background like that. Going back to my new layer, with the paintbrush, this time I can use it maybe a bit bigger. This, and just paint these bits out, like so. Now where it gets close here, um, I can actually just zoom in a bit. Uh, and this time I will use a clone tool. Uh, so going back to the original layer, but I'm going to clone it onto the new layer. So I'm going to sample from this layer and clone onto this layer. So with the clone tool selected, I'll leave the size of the brush as it is. Uh, I'm just going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, which will then grab that sample like that, change to the new layer, and clone that out, just like that. There we go. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that if I didn't like that, I can just start again because it's on a completely separate layer. I haven't done anything to the actual image. OK, so using the same technique, I can do something about um, all these bits at the bottom here. So again, just going on to the uh, original, holding down the Alt key, take a sample, go back up onto my new layer, and just clone that bit out. And I can do the same for this as well, like so. Now this larger area um, will probably need a bit more uh, work on it, uh, especially the bit which is fairly close to the plant. 
So what I'm going to do, I think, is just uh, I'll pan over slightly and I'll borrow some bits from over here to put down here. So again, going back to the original there. I'll leave the brush size as it is, holding down the Alt key on the keyboard. Take a sample from over there. Moving up to the new layer. And I'll just take that in like that. Uh, and then for the rest of it, just carry on really. So I'm just doing the same technique over and over. There, so with that completed, what I can do is just zoom back out again. So with those little bits done, uh, we can just review what we've done. If I just click on the layer control here, that's what we had to start with. And that's what we've done for the editing. And I think that's turned out very well. So from a fairly mundane starting point, uh, with the addition of a few lighting techniques and a little spray of water, and I think the addition of the water has really lifted the image. Uh, so you've got all these highlights appearing in each water droplet, which I think uh, adds to it quite well. All in all, very nice image. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other pictures as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.